Good evening, you are watching News Mongolian MNB World. I'm your host, Jugdur Rambold. And uh, for our top stories for you today. Female foreign ministries meet in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, to address global challenges. Prime Minister Ayung Erdin attends the World Economic Forum annual meeting of the new champions. For other news, stay with us. In a historic move, female foreign ministers from around the world have gathered in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, for the first ever female foreign ministers meeting. The two-day meeting is scheduled for June 29th to 30, 2023, aims to discuss pressing issues facing international relations and seek possible solutions. Hosted by the Foreign Minister of Mongolia, Ms. Batsetsek Batmoh, the event highlights the importance of women's leadership and their role in shaping foreign policy. The meeting comes at a crucial time when gender equality and women's empowerment remain significant challenges in the global decision-making process. Despite progress made in advancing gender equality and combating discrimination, women's representation in senior leadership positions remains disproportionately low worldwide. Recognizing the positive impact of women's leadership, the meeting seeks to amplify women's voices and promote their participation in decision-making processes. Last year, during the United Nations General Assembly, I had the opportunity to meet with female ministers. It is worth noting that more than 30 out of 193 UN member states have female ministers. Previously, at informal meetings among women ministers, concrete decisions were rarely made. To address this, I proposed the creation of a female foreign policy network, a group comprising female foreign ministers. I presented this initiative to the President of Mongolia suggesting an unprecedented meeting in Mongolia, which has garnered significant support. This event, organized under the President's auspices, holds great importance as it marks the first of its kind in Asia. The presence of influential ministers and distinguished guests emphasizes the significance of this event. The concept of feminist foreign policy is relatively new in Mongolia. This concept was introduced by the Swedish Minister of Foreign Affairs back in 2014. Over 20 countries have already adopted this policy aiming to achieve gender balance in foreign relations. It is important to know that feminist foreign policy doesn't prioritize one gender over another. Instead, professionalism and gender neutrality are emphasized in the field of foreign relations. Today's event has two primary objectives, to showcase and promote Mongolia globally and to facilitate the exchange of ideas among female foreign ministers on global peace, security, food supply, food security and climate change. We are considering the possibility of holding such meetings periodically. This event serves as a powerful demonstration of the vital role women can play in diplomacy, inspiring and motivating women while benefiting young diplomats with an interest in foreign relations. Our country's strong commitment to democracy, respect for human rights and advocacy for regional and global peace and security have gained global recognition. The value of freedom is paramount, and hosting various meetings within our country yields numerous benefits. With the increased frequency of large-scale state visits, we have effectively showcased our country's capabilities and contributions on the international stage. Mongolia has been actively supporting international initiatives for women and has contributed Mongolian women peacekeepers to the United Nations peacekeeping missions. Today's meeting of the female foreign ministers gathered here in Ulaanbaatar is very important to highlight women's role in leadership in global issues. The issues that are being focused on during uh, today's event are climate change, food security, and peace and security. And these are very important uh, crises that every country in the world is facing, including Mongolia. And therefore, as UNDP, we're very proud and honored to be able to participate to this dialogue um, the female foreign ministers that are gathered here uh, and other ministers are showing their leadership and how the engagement of women in decision-making and policy-making 
is important and we must increase the number of women in these roles so that there's equal representation and women's voice and agency is equally represented in all policies and decision making. Well, women's empowerment is a fundamental human right. Mongolia, as other countries, have signed on to international human rights treaties. So giving women's rights is not a, uh, a privilege or something to be granted. It's an inherent right from birth that all women are equal to men. And therefore, putting the efforts to really ensure that women are empowered is very, very important because over hundreds and thousands of years of history, women have not been empowered. They have not had equal chance and opportunity in the economy, in education, in other sectors. And therefore, this is a, a time in the 21st century now to finally achieve gender equality uh, for all women in every country around the world. The Female Foreign Minister's Committee aims to foster consensus and solidarity among its participants, serving as a catalyst for promoting multilateral cooperation to address global challenges. By sharing best practices of female foreign policymaking, the meeting aspires to shape pro-woman foreign policies not only in Mongolia, but also in the wider Asian region. Mongolia hopes that its initiative will inspire other countries to pursue feminist foreign policies and contribute to global efforts for gender equality. So I think the, the international community uh, and Mongolia can work together. Uh, I have to say that there are uh, several very good examples in Mongolia but also outside Mongolia. And in that sense, uh, I think countries can learn from each other, uh, can, countries can see uh, what other countries are doing. Let me give you one or two examples. One, uh, there was an experiment uh, done uh, in India. They were Younger women were given a chance to work with the women leaders and that really sort of expo they served as a role model and in that sense I think th that really brought out a lot of uh, confidence and inspiration amongst young young women so they are able to break their barriers same thing was in Lesotho there was a study done uh, or there was an experiment done where women uh, younger women were exposed to women leaders and that really sort of that inspired them so I think countries can share experiences share practices countries can ins inspire each other and in that sense we all together can uh, can advance towards gender equality guided by the themes of peace and security climate change and food security the meeting will provide a platform for ministers to deliberate and exchange information the year 2022 witnessed increased geopolitical tensions complicating the resolution of global challenges and exacerbating existing ones Issues such as climate change, natural disasters and the COVID-19 pandemic require greater international cooperation as no country can tackle these challenges on its own. Particularly vulnerable are small and impoverished nations which face rising unemployment, poverty and political instability. These threats also pose risk to global peace, security and the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. His Excellency Mr. Kuril Suk Ukna, President of Mongolia, her Excellency Ms. Batsetsek Batmong, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Mongolia, Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, I'm honored to join you for the first ever Women Foreign Ministers Meeting in Mongolia. At the outset, I thank and commend the Government of Mongolia for this important initiative. I deeply appreciate its long tradition of pursuing a feminist foreign policy and placing women at the forefront of its socioeconomic endeavors. Excellencies, the focus of this event on the role of women in promoting peace and security, tackling climate change and ensuring food security is indeed very timely. These are all interrelated issues and in fact the most pressing challenges of our time. They also hold the key to emerging from the current overlapping crisis of the COVID-19 pandemic, conflicts and climate change. The gender dimension of these issues is also well recognized. As the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said, and I quote, gender equality offers a path to sustainable peace and conflict prevention, and yet we are moving in the opposite direction. He also pointed out that the climate crisis hits women and girls the hardest. They suffer disproportionately from the lack of food, water scarcity, and forced migration. Governments, civil society, and international institutions must prioritize knowledge sharing, resource mobilization, and joint actions to eliminate gender-based violence in all its forms and manifestations. 
excellencies, distinguished colleagues, as women leaders in our respective fields, we should continue to pool our collective resolve and resources to achieve gender equality and women's empowerment. To empower and enable women everywhere to reach their full potentials, to live a life of dignity and justice, and not to be left behind in our policies, actions, and achievements. Through this meeting, we are sending a strong message of that resolve and commitment, and I'm honored to have been part of this excellent initiative. The consequences of climate change and the ongoing pandemic have further weakened worldwide food systems and amplifying existing inequalities. Mongolia as the host country has proposed the three guiding topics of discussion. The role of women in promoting peace and security, climate change and food security. These topics reflect on the urgent need for collaborative action to address these pressing issues and achieve a sustainable and equitable future. The female foreign ministers meeting will be held in person in Lombator with the honorable presence of Mongolia's president. Those unable to attend in person will have the opportunity to follow the proceedings throughout their live streaming. Panel discussions on the guiding topics will foster engaging conversations and facilitate the exchange of valuable insights and best practices among the participating ministers and officials. This groundbreaking meeting signifies a significant step towards promoting women's leadership in international affairs and advancing gender equality on a global scale. As female foreign ministers come together to address pressing global challenges, it is hoped that their collective efforts will lead to tangible progress and inspire young women and girls worldwide to strive for greater recognition, leadership and participation in shaping our shared future. During his official visit to China, the Prime Minister of Mongolia, Yong Erdin, has attended the annual World Economic Forum meeting of the new champions, taking place from 27 to 29th June, and met Klaus Schwab, founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum. The Prime Minister of Mongolia said that he believed that the events organized by the World Economic Forum will have a positive impact on ensuring sustainable economic development and growth after the global pandemic and facilitate overcoming of the challenges arising from new geopolitical situations. During the forum, country leaders, major investors, executives of the multinational corporations, researchers and civil society activists discuss global challenges such as the world economy, technological growth and sustainable development. Prime Minister Yurten, the Prime Minister of Vietnam, Pham Minh Chin, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Chris Hipkins and the Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley, are joining the forum as honorary guests. Prime Minister Yurten mentioned the Mongolian Economic Forum that provides insights on the investment policy, environment and business opportunities in Mongolia to be organized from 9th to 10th of July and invited Professor Schwab to attend the forum. After that, he met the chairman of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, Zhao Leiji. During the meeting, the parties emphasized that cooperation of the supreme legislative bodies of two countries is the main basis for developing comprehensive strategic partnership between Mongolia and China strengthening the legal environment and improving political trust. The chairman of the Standing Committee, Zhao Leiji, said that he will support development of cooperation between both countries by implementing infrastructure projects. Please uh, take a look at the current affairs of Mongolia. Chinese Premier Li Chan met Mongolian Prime Minister Lhosun Amsrayurdan in Beijing amid high-level talks between the two neighboring countries on Wednesday. Li hosted a red carpet welcoming ceremony for Prime Minister Ayurdan, followed by bilateral talks between the two leaders. Li told Prime Minister Ayurdan he was happy with the fast growth of economic and trade relations between the two nations and the pair agreed to further promote ties. After the talks, they witnessed the signing of a series of agreements on technology, road connections, stock markets and livestock products. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for staying tuned. We'll see you next time with more news and updates. Have a nice day.